So far through to the Robot Wars semi-finals, a dirty dozen with flippers and flippers. We've had damage and destruction, weird wheelies, grisly designs, plenty of bumping and barging, savage demolition. We've had speed and thrust, old champions back. And once again, let's get on track. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the man who wrote all R2-D2's jokes, Craig Charles. Imagine this ancient Rome. It's a Sunday afternoon. You've washed your chariot, you've ironed your togas, and now you're off down the amphitheatre to watch grown men get butchered. OK, so the ancient Romans enjoyed some pretty barbaric entertainment. But back then, it was just like the footy. <laughs> Only Roman gladiators never advertised shampoo even if all that was left of them was their head and shoulders. And I suppose it's a bit like Robot Wars. Although our gladiators don't wear skirts, they wear titanium-plated body armour. And they don't fight for honour either. They fight for a place in our series semi-finals. Yes, it may be savage, but it's still drawn in the crowds. Philippa, who's getting thrown to the lions this week? Yeah, welcome to the pits. We're fast realising why it is called the pits because here are some familiar faces to you. What have you got to say to us guys? Do you remember One, them? One, two, two, three. We are the crew, and we're here to tell you we're going to bash them. We're going to trash them. In the wars, you know, we're going to thrash them. The forecast bad. You better get running. It's going to be tough. There's a thunderstorm coming. Okay, so that's what they're aiming for in this heat. Oh, I'm just aiming to have my ears fixed. This is used. It runs on. Remember Get Busy with the Fizzy? That's what their weapons run on. It's fantastic. They've got a thing and a thing, and they're going to inflict loads of damage. And this is Scutter's Revenge, who claim that they have the most extreme motors. Motors, am I right? Yeah. Most extreme motors we've ever seen yet on Robot Wars. They have to prove it, though. That's the thing. The moment you've all been waiting for, this is the new revamped Cassius 2 with the new revamped team. They're an amalgamation now. Rex, I don't know. Where's Rex gone? He's disappeared. He's just disappeared. Typical, he's off everywhere. Uh, it's got the flipper, as before, and it's also got a secret weapon in there. Wait until you see that, that's very exciting. This is Pussycat. Ah, oh, but she's not nice, is she? No, she's uh, more of a slicer than a nicer. A slicer than a nicer. She flips down and then gets the willing victim with a circular saw. And then this is Hammerhead. Nothing to do with the shark, um, but just as lethal as the shark might be. If sharks were always lethal, but they're not. They're very nervous creatures, actually. Before I start on that, <laughs> they've got a hammer and a spike uh, and a scooper. So they're very, you're very confident, aren't you? Quietly. And look at this. This is Dundee as in crocodile. Dundee. Tell me about what this does. Uh, the teeth pulls the victim in. Yeah. The mouth comes down and yeah. the disc cutter chops them in half. And gnashes them to death. The gnashes victim. The victim. The victim is gnashed to death. Gnashed to death. So there's loads of violence in this heat. Yeah. Hope so, Philippa. Sharks are nervy, are you sure? Hammerhead's jaws against the pussycat's claws. That's how the battle ball begins. Rex Garrard, Roboteer Legend with Cassius 2 against Crocodile Dundee. The Plunderstorm Rappers against Lobster Thermidor. Zeus with their thing in their thing against the extremely mean Scudder's Revenge Team. I'd say don't try this at home. But who's got a high-tech arena with a flame pit in their living room? Not me. Let the wars begin. From Barnstable, Hammerhead. The name comes from the interchangeable axe hammerhead weapon powered by a car starter motor. This is quick, well protected by three millimeter alloy with steel bracing. Could this be a hammerhead shark? Hi, I'm Mike, it's my brother Paul. And here's our robot hammerhead. Um, we've got twin electric motors, four wheel drive, and also scoop to scoop our opposition up. And then we'll aim to finish them with a hammer. From Gloucester. Pussycat. A diamond saw gives this pussycat some bite. A plastic body shell could be a problem if they're thrown to the dogs of war. Cost a thousand pounds to build over two months. And they're back from the previous series when they had body hammer. And there you can see the changes from last year. No wheels on body hammer. Speed controls would be virtually the same. There was a flare weapon and a circular saw. But manoeuvrability was a problem. It got stuck in the gauntlet and out came Killalot to finish it off. Much more manoeuvrable this time around. 
and they'll be hoping for better things. It's our robot Pussycat, and I'm Robin, that's David, and there's Robert. It's quite an unusual design, as you can see, because it's got an aluminium body, some polycarbonate, four wheels, one diamond-coated saw. The idea is that the whole thing flips over. It can flip either way, and it just keeps going, hoping to do quite a lot of damage. Robot ears, stand by. Hammerhead, a speed machine up to 14 miles an hour. Brothers Paul and Mike Brent want to be racing car drivers. And Pussycat Three, with Robin Herrick, two, the captain there one. in the middle. Activate. A strange looking pussycat. Now there you can see rolling forward to bring the circular saw into play. And the circular saw immediately attacking the side of Hammerhead. Which looks ponderous at the moment. Sparks begin to fly. They're in the pussycat controls. They're purring. And again, the cat here. Whoa! Using not talons and claws, but the circular saw for the Hammerhead. Great. Hammer came down, and again, what a wise tactic. Let's attack the arena floor, boys. No, 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 it's not the idea. You attack the other robot and the house robots, not the arena floor. And now they're stuck. And the pussycat team could come in here and wreck havoc. Pushing and shoving and bumping Hammerhead. Hammerhead digs in, traction on the arena floor. It's pussycat doing all the pushing, all the attacking. Ooh, meow, meow, you could be in pain, Hammerhead, if you go into that pit. And into the pit goes the shark. The Hammerhead Six. plums to the depths. Well, there's pause for thought. Pussycat wins. We had a bit of a hammer problem. <laughs> but your that... robot's called Hammerhead. Yeah. You're meant to make sure you don't have any hammer problems. Yeah, well, it was unforeseen. We haven't had Just enough practice on other robots, you see. You think the set wood was too soft? Yeah. That's the excuse. We were smashing the set up, I think. <laughs> the set wood was too soft. Yeah. We, we had a problem with our hammer. <laughs> we, we, it was we, unforeseen. We, we didn't have enough practice. We nearly ripped your set to bits. We scored it all up. Oh, another one. Well, another we had, excuse. We were dragging, you see. We were, we were dragging a hammer behind us. I'm on. kind of waiting for two words. <laughs> We've we lost. lost, yes. Yeah. Thank you very well, we much. I don't want the excuses, I just want the two words. It's a pretty good show, wasn't it? Yeah, it was fantastic. Come in, come in, come in. No small part to our driver, thanks to our driver. Well, it was pretty stunning. It used all the implements that it had. It did everything that you wanted it to do. It did better than I thought. It did better than you thought? Yeah. Oh, well, fantastic. Congratulations. You're a little bit shocked, aren't you? Yeah. I can tell. Yeah. Go and relax, but do get ready for the next bout. Pussycat performed fantastically well. Hammerhead didn't have enough practice against other robots. What were they practicing against? Pussycat go through. Next up, Cassius 2 against Dundee. From Suffolk, Cassius 2. The long-awaited appearance of the runner-up from the last series, Cassius and Rex Gowd. A flip-up paddle and CO2-powered rear spike the weapons. Motors from lawnmowers. Can this cut the rest out of size? And what innovations? What surprises this time around? Because in the last wars, Cassius stunned us all. The first ever appearance of a three mech, a self riding mechanism. Cassius II, the favourite to win the wars because of agility and ability like that. Fantastic roly poly style. But then, met panic attack in the final. We're beaten. My name's Rex Garrett, and this is my crew Mick Cutter, Simon West. And this is my robot, Cassius II. It's much faster, much lighter. Got a more effective weapon at the back, which is uh, a ram, which protrudes about three quarters of a meter. The enormous power should be quite a lethal weapon. And of course, it still does its famous flip, and it has air suspension. And that's about it. From Bristol, Dundee. Drive chains from a car, teeth chains from a hospital hoist. The main frames of physio's couch. The bodywork comes from freezers. They plundered everything from here to Dundee. Enough to drive anyone loco, and that's how they appeared in the last wars. And would you believe it? They were drawn against Cassius then. They're against Cassius too now. But that's not lucky for them. Rolled up and over. Going loco, but not in Acapulco. On the arena floor, 
and it wasn't the locomotion too long. My name's Eric Mannion. I'm part of the Dundee team with Richard Mannion, my son, and Charles Humphreys, his friend. Built mainly of scrap material, probably has taken us about three months to build. The idea of the teeth is to actually draw the opponent into the disc cutter. The disc cutter is actually mounted on the top part of the jaw, which also lifts and lowers, which should be able to tip an opponent or push them over. Robot ears, stand by. Another change for Cassius 2 this time around. Mick Cutter there on the right was with the Chaos team in the last series. And there's Dundee. Three, with two, Dad Eric Mannion, one, Richard his son and Charles Humphreys. And it's the Croc that comes rocking out of the starting traps first. Cassius using the big flipper. Oh, and immediately driven here. Cassius into Killalot's claws. The great Lance and the drill and the pincer of Killalot, but away, Cassius, and using good speed too. A zero turning circle. How much speed, we asked Rex Garrett. Sufficient was his reply. Keeping his cards very close to his chest. Cassius too now, bumping against Dundee and trying to shovel it towards Killalot, towards the CPZ. You push an opponent into a CPZ, a corner patrol zone, and that means the house robots can come out to play. Killalot against Dundee. Dundee away, slamming into the wall and bouncing off. There's Rex Garrett and uh, Nick Cutter at the controls of Cassius too. Good battle this. And Dundee already doing better than Loco did in the last series until then. And falling the same way. Sucked in, flipped up and over, and over and out. And now it's Cassius 2 against the House Robots. And this is what we love about Rex Garrett. A smile etched on his face of pure joy as his bot takes on the House Robots. Oh, and taking terrible punishment from Shunt slamming down through the polycarbonate body shell. Trying to flip Shunt away. Rammed against the arena wall. Cassius 2 already through, of course, because Dundee, a sorry sad lost sight in the middle of the arena. Cassius, cheeky as ever, they're through to round two. Where was the victim in the jaws? It wouldn't go in. No! <laughs> we tried. You've met Cassius before, haven't you, and Rex and the team? Yes, we were loco in the last series and yes. we met Rex and he beat us then, so we were a bit disappointed, really, when we were drawn against him this time, but uh, if you're going to go out, go out to the best, isn't it? Well, so... exactly. It was spectacular, yeah. wasn't it? It was. Very good. You two must be very proud. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Brilliant. And, I'm sure... and that round of applause is for these guys too, isn't it? Yeah. There you go. All right? Yeah. You go home happy and I'm pleased. So you two are hoping to go all the way, aren't you? No, well, come on. We're, we want to do well, yes. Yeah? Um, we'll... I prefer to have some good tussles with the house robots yes. rather than the competitors, I think. But, uh, well, no, you were in there fun. with Matilda, I have oh, to yes, say. Oh, yes, we had a good go. We had a little bit of hassle. Is it, I know, you only just got away with it, really, didn't you? <laughs> yes. <Okay. laughs> you can tell he's honest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, poor Dundee team, drawn against Cassius again and going out. Next up, Plunderstorm against Thermidor. Hot stuff. From Hampshire, Plunderstorm. The boast is this can go faster than time. Its steel costs £4,000 to build over 500 hours. The rest, well, it's a secret, but with their own entrance theme and their costumes, they were great fun in the last series. Fun they were, and they had their boasts last time around, but against the Sentinel and Matilda, were they frightened? Did they duck out? Did they say, we're going in here for safety? We're all calling you chickens over there. We're not chickens, we just wanted to get through to the next round, but most of all, we want to have a go at the house robots. Silence! <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> we're back and we're going to stay. More violence. My name is Mike Onslow. This is Ken Burke. And that is Brian Kilburn. And this is Plunderstorm. And our robot is our weapon. It's got power, it's got blades, and we got attitude. We got lots and lots of attitude. From Norwich, Thermidor. The heaviest in the field with its huge pincers at the front of the lobster shaped three millimeter alloy shell. Cycle helmet and all, start pedaling, boys, otherwise you could be on your bike. 
We're Team Lobster. My name's Dave. This is Eli. This is Ian. This is our robot Thermidor. We've got steel claws on the front, a spike, the wheels are off the Metro, and we've got a cutting disc on the rear. Robot ears, stand by. They're the Plunderstorm team. Mike Onslow, the captain of sculptor and mold maker, he has his own business. And Thermidor. Three. With two, David Harding and one, Ian Harvey at the controls. Two, eight. So will Plunderstorm live up to their attitude and their boasts? Thermidor, what a great design, the lobster shape. And what problems here again for Plunderstorm right at the start? They seem to have steering problems, design problems. Well, they have attitude. Will Thermidor leave them with a few hats to be chewed up? Will those caps and sunglasses and the attitude and boasts all mean nothing here for Plunderstorm because they're not moving? And in come the house robots. <laughs> Plunderstorm accused of being chickens last time around. Well, cluck, cluck, boys, you're doing nothing here. In comes Dead Metal. Oh, Mike Onslow, Ken Burton, Brian Kilburn. What's happened to you again here, boys? We expected so much. There's the camera on Killalot as Dead Metal backs away. In comes Matilda. Again, the camera on Killalot recording every grisly detail of the demise of Plunderstorm. Plunderstorm? It's not even a shower. Well, the blows are, are raining down under a, a hail of blows from Shunt. It's a cloudy future for Plunderstorm, that's for certain. It's snow joke for them, and the weather forecast is that the Plunderstorm will be swiftly snuffed out and there will be sunny skies ahead for Thermidor. That's the end of Plunderstorm again. Cease. Plunderstorm in the pit. Now Thermidor can get his claws into round two. Mechanical malfunction. Because we never had time to try it. And we got a complete mullering. Yes. So somebody's going to have to pay for the next war. Uh, we are the crew. We're, we're here to tell, tell you we're, we're going to bash them. them. We're going to trash them. In, In the wars, wars you know, we're, we're going to smash them. them. The forecast bad. You better get running. You've got to be rough. There's a thunderstorm coming. Next year. And now going. <laughs> <laughs> Thermidor did good. Yeah, it did well. We're pleased. Very pleased. Good. Are you still in shock, aren't you? You're round two material now in Robot Wars. OK? Yeah. Good. Off you go. Oh, dear. You've got to give it to the Plunderstorm boys. Great fun. What a shower. Thermidor through. Zeus against Scutter's Revenge next up. From Wiltshire. Zeus. From the pantheon of the robot gods comes Zeus with its rear pickaxe and the scoop lifted by a five-ton airbag mechanism. The body is a semi-wedge, they say. We're the Team Clean Machine. This is our robot Zeus. It's a very powerful machine, capable of uh, lifting a transit van and pushing a Range Rover. We've got airbag on the front, lifting a big shovel and, and a good spike on the back. From Essex. Scutter's Revenge. Scutter shouldn't splutter, thanks to double two-horsepower car starter motors from V6 engines. The shell's aluminium, the front bulldozer blade is the weapon. We're the Scutter's Revenge team. Uh, this is Graham, this is Remy and I'm Darren. Uh, this is our robot, Scutter's Revenge. Uh, it's basically been built for sheer power and strength. Our main weapons are the flipping blade at the front, that's just for either flipping robots or pushing them away. We've had it pull in a four-ton truck 
So we should be pretty all right for anyone who can come up against us. Robotiers, stand by. There's the Zeus machine of the Raffle family. Julian, Mark and John. And Scutter's Revenge. Three, two, Remy in the middle. One, Darren Ball at the controls. Debate. Steady, slow and not spectacular start. They tell us that Scutter's Revenge has this mighty power. Engines like we've never seen or heard, hardly roaring, more like purring, but nonetheless shoving Zeus against the arena wall and now pushing it over the arena floor too, towards the grid. Oh, look! The little pickaxe has gone, snapped off on the arena grid and into the pit. Well, that was over very quickly for Zeus. They're out. The gods weren't with them today. Zeus goes in the pit. Let's hear it for Scutter's revenge. Well, the damage was done. The spike came off on the arena grill. And then Scutter's revenge won last heave-ho and Zeus was gone. Oh dear. What a shame, disaster. Oh, dear. oh the shame of it all. <laughs> <laughs> oh. well, we weren't chickens, we're not like the plunder boys. Well, no, so we, went, we, went without we, we, we went without weapons. Yeah. Yeah. We without anything went. working. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> we weren't chickens, they took our spike off, but we're not so chickens. The, you didn't get busy with the fizzy. Didn't get to no, use no. it at all. No. Oh, Shut vengeance, the God man did. Sorry guys, it has to be. It has to be. <laughs> <laughs> it was all over very quickly, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. it was. Is it normally like that with you guys? Well, it, it, it was our big motors. <laughs> yeah, you remember what I was doing? A stream power. A stream power. And that means it's all over in a trice. Yep. Yes. I'm afraid it so. can only be a good thing in Robot Wars. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Onwards Thank you. and upwards. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah? yeah. Definitely. Judgment day for someone else soon. Yeah, it certainly will be. <laughs> So then very nice over in a try scutters revenge through with Thermidor, Cassius 2 and Pussycat. Now this is how they line up in the heat semi-finals. It's Cassius 2 against Pussycat, Scudder's Revenge drawn against Thermidor, but I'm hearing all is not well in the pits, Philippa. Tell us why. Breaking news, as you can see, the arena behind me, the audience are just being warmed up, but what we've just found out is that somebody has had to confiscate a transmitter from a member of the audience which has significant repercussions because it implies that cheating is occurring here on Robot Wars. We will not be happy. Neither will the house robot. More news as we get it. And now for the last time this series, it's one of those rambling robots. It's a sprint finish, or maybe not, in the last of our walker battles. He who stands up the longest wins, basically. This is Mammoth, legs made from fence posts. The face is an automatic door opener. The lifting arm is a garden hoe. It took four and a half weeks to build. My name's Ian Burrell, and this is my uh, teammate, Stuart. This is Mammoth, the walking robot. He's got eight legs, removable armor, a 360-degree weapon system, which is guided by an ultrasonic uh, rangefinder at the front. An arachnid began as a six-legged beetle, was modified, grew two more legs, finally ended up with 12 legs. The body shell is top secret. I'm Mike, and this is Mike the driver. An arachnid. Got no weapons, got no armour, but they can't be detected by radar. <laughs> Mike Tibbs, one of the characters, obviously, of Robot, Robot Wars. Stand by. He's a freelance designer. There's... Mammoth, though, his opponents with Stuart and Ian Burrell, brothers, and Anna Rachnid. Three. Mike is actually two, godfather to the younger one, Mike, who's 15, Mike teammates. Smith, that is. Slow and steady progress. Mammoth with the fence post legs and Anna Rachnid. Don't make any plans for Christmas, boys. Uh, you'll still be here. When they eventually come to meet, it could come to blows from those spinning arms and the lifting arm on Mammoth, as we've heard. Anarachnid doesn't really have any weaponry. <laughs> Looks great, though. Well, I was going to say scuttling across the arena floor. You, you know what I mean. 
Well, they're eventually going to come to... 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 blows, I think. Great work has gone into these robots. Patient work, as you can see. And now Anarachnid just levering Mammoth to one side. Oh, look at that! Mammoth on fire! The flame flower that flicked out from Bash has caught Mammoth's woolly hairstyle. <laughs> After all that build-up, is, is that a judge's syrup on top? A wig, perhaps, of a barrister? I don't know, perhaps it's just some some piece of carpet, but it's on fire at the moment. And the boys will give themselves a real carpeting afterwards, I should think. Poor old Mammoth's on fire, and Arachnid's now being dragged across the arena floor by the... <laughs> That's robots. This is shunt. Oh, well, they... They spider spider out there, and they're taking it apart now. Oh, that's an incy wincy spidey, incy wincy little bit. And mammoth. Well, it was a woolly mammoth at one stage. Cease. Now it's a balding minnow, really. Not a lot left of it. Or an arachnid. They can celebrate. Very close. This one might even be a tie. You know. There's the burning, smouldering mammoth. Put out of its pain at last. Never really drawn into the web of an arachnid. Very tight. This is a draw. Both robots are magnificent. I don't understand what on earth the house robots' problem was. Uh, I think they were made out of paper mache <laughs> now as well. <laughs> oh. We had a problem walking. Did you? We started with all green teachers. No, we sort of had like a lethargic hobble. Yes, you did. Well, it was true gladiator entertainment, so thank you very you much. Yeah, all yeah? to these guys. Yeah. Oh, they made it entertaining, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, mutual congratulations. Boot walking, foot stomping carnage. Nancy Sinatra would have been proud. But now it's back to the rock and roll of the championships. I told you about the transmitter that had to be confiscated from the audience. We've got it here. Derek, tell me about this. Where did you find it? Fortunately, the security guards confiscated it off of one of the audience. Do you think that member of the audience knows any of the robot is, or do you think it's just somebody out to cause trouble? No, I don't think they ought to cause trouble at all. Oh, and I was worried about cheating. And look, somebody has bought in a little robot for us. That's very sweet, isn't it? But can I just compare it to the size of Killer Lot here? I uh, don't think it could do that much damage, do you? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> get underneath. No, we could get underneath. We could get underneath and get into the look business. Look at those spikes. Yeah, oh, spikes. look at those spikes oh, in the so units. Cool. Just imagine that. I don't think there was any malice intended at all. So no malice intended at all. So we can wrap that case up. Yeah. Oh, I was a private investigator for a second there. <laughs> oh, well, thank The Christie Mystery hits Robot Wars. This is the semi final lineup Cassius 2 against Pussycat, Scudder's Revenge against Thermidor. Rumours are rife around the pits that if you end up in the pit on that back, it right, on your back, out. come on. It would get out. You would flip yourself no, out not flip. of the pit. It would project itself out with that ram straight up in the air and out. If it goes in Very backwards. spectacular. If it goes in backwards. <laughs> it has to be backwards. So if I goes in frontwards, we've had it. We've had it. Okay. We are in deep, deep. Yes. <laughs> wow, this should be a pretty spectacular battle, don't you think? Well, there is one of Robot Wars' great innovators, Rex Garrett on the left, and the Pussycat team. Their captain, of course, is Robin Herrick. Promises to be a Robot tremendous battle, this high. one. Cassius 2 with the Three, flipper. Two, There's Pussycat. One. Activate. Roll over to get the diamond saw into play immediately. Against the wedge front of Cassius, but don't forget the flipper lies within that wedge front. That's the back of the pussycat cherry picker. Cassius won't want to go on the flame pit. Controls, of course, protected by the polycarbonate shell, but could burn out if torch. Great shunting and bashing and barging going on. Pussycat trying to right itself. The Shremek technique 
brought into room by one, but Gassi is into the pit backwards. Six. So we'll see. Can they get themselves out, or did it go in sideways? That's the first time we saw the great CO2-powered spike lunging out. Now they went on the drive. Misjudged, went into the pit on its side. They won't get out from there. What a shock this is. Cassius 2 have gone. Shock all round. Cassius 2, my personal favourite, goes out. The winner is Pussycat. Rex. What went wrong? Well, we went in the pit again. <laughs> I'm not driving this time. <laughs> he takes fault. full responsibility. So, so you're responsible. All I mean, responsible, yeah. you are probably my favourite robot to win this. <laughs> I had my money on you guys. <laughs> and well, yet, you lost again. Well, you've got loads of tricks that the robot can do yes. that we never got to see. I know, but that was a, a terrific opponent. It's no a fine robot, that. isn't it? It really is. Cassius was responsible for one of the finest, finest moments on Robot Wars 2. We were expecting fireworks from you this time round, but it never happened. Well, you got the fireworks out the pit. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Ladies and gentlemen, give Cassius two a round of applause. Right. Well, that is a stunning Brilliant. robot. Yeah, well, it did the business. It... We, we got them in the pit. What can I say? Do you think you can go on and win it now? You've taken out one of the favourites. Well, it was a good match. Uh, I'm sure there's some other strong competitors out there, but we're ready. It seems like a very difficult robot to sort of knock over, because it's got wheels everywhere, really. You can't knock it over. No? Whichever way it is, it's running. That was part of the original design before we cut any metal, and mm -hmm. we knew it had to do that. Excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, give them a round of applause. This is Pussycat! <laughs> What? What? What happened? Can I just say one thing? Yes. I wasn't holding any controls. I was just stood there. It was just with your mind. It's his fault. It's my fault, yeah. So Is I it your fault? I drove into the pit back. Oh, no, mate. Can I write in? I'm, I'm no, you can't write in. No. I want to unwrite it. <laughs> no, he, he tried his best. You were a new team. I had high hopes for you, because it was a great combination. Will you ever work together again, do you think? No. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> and you just didn't go in the pit the right way. No. No. We wanted to see that stunt where you sprang back out. Well, it would have done, but, I mean, um, uh, that's a pity. And I won't, be, I won't get to fight any house robots this year. It's really oh, sad. I know. It's oh, just... dear, dear. It's all know. over. All over and done. But knowing well, it's not you, really his fault. Knowing you, <laughs> you're going to go and help everyone else with their robots now, aren't you? Well, that's the usual way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, you're great. Thank you so much for bringing us Cassius 2. We're only sorry we didn't get to see him to perform more. Well done. Fantastically well. That robot was springing around all over the place. Yeah, uh, it was a bit shorter than we would have cool liked. Don't go all cool on me. But you know, it was the result we wanted, as they say. Yes, it was the result you wanted. You were all too cool. I think there's there's nerves inside that you can't see. Yeah, yeah. It's fantastic. You beat Cassius too. It's fantastic. You're through. Yeah. I think the emotion came out during the match. They're too cool. Just too cool. <laughs> Such a shame, Rex Garrard and Mick Cutter together with Simon West and Cassius too. They've gone pussycat through and it's Scudder's Revenge against Thermidor up next. That's the Scudder's Revenge team. Remy in the middle, Darren Ball on the right and there's Thermidor. With Ian Harvey, David Harding and Eli Kirkpatrick. The youngster on the right. stand by. Wants to be a rocket scientist. Well, Three, will they get into orbit off the front two, shovel of Scudder's Revenge, one. I wonder? Activate. Thermidor with the glaring eyes and the lobster pincers on the attack. They have a cycle helmet in the front as well, but Scutter's Revenge has that huge front bulldozer blade and plenty of power. The starter motors from 2.9 litre V6 engines. Oh, behave, Scutter's Revenge, says the message on the back. Well, Thermidor wants to get it into its claws and then Pushed towards a CP7, but it's being pushed towards the pit itself. Cease. And the lobster is in the net and caught. And it's Scutter's Revenge who go through. Thermidor gets thrown into the pot of boiling water. Scutter's Revenge is through to the next round. 
I wonder what a scooter is. Let's hear it for Scooter's Revenge. <laughs> Just, Apart from the obvious, <laughs> what happened from your point of view? We just didn't have enough traction. They, they beat us. There's lobster a la pit, which we never expected. No, no but what never, mind. never mind. <laughs> what an absolute nightmare, isn't it? Has it been big fun? Yeah. Good. Well, that's what matters. That's the most important thing. And will we see you again, do you think? Yeah. Will you make a bigger, better lobster for us? Yeah. OK, we'll look forward to that next time. <laughs> Thank you very much for lobster thermidor. Thank Sadly, you. lobster, I'll up it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? What was uh, it? George Mendy again. For the <laughs> yeah, for the lobster. Red and crispy. Yeah. Red and Just crispy. Just the way we like it. Yeah. <laughs> we had lobster and it tasted good. Yay! OK, well done, guys. Get on with it. Thank you. Get on with it. It's not that easy. Oh, no. <laughs> Nothing's been easy in this heat M so far. Ups and downs, twists and turns, cutters revenge through, of course. And now meeting Pussycat in the final. What can happen here? It's been a very eventful heat, this one. Two more robots off to meet their makers. Two robotic immortals about to do battle for a place in our series semi-finals. What day is it, Scutter's Revenge team? Judgment Day. Who again. for? For the Pussycat. For the Pussycat, you yeah. reckon? We know. This robot is mean. Well, everyone yeah. knows the last thing you do every day is you put the cat out. <laughs> and that's exactly what we're going to do. You know what they're saying, come on. Yeah, I think uh, they're saying we're going home, but I think they might be catching the next train. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is going to be mean, this fight. <laughs> Pussycat progressing quietly and confidently so far, hitting Hammerhead very early on. And then the biggest surprise of all, the knockout blow to Cassius II, as Rex Garrard's machine went into the pit. That's a huge surprise. Scutter's revenge. Beat a robot wars god in Zeus. And then from the pits of the robot wars, oceans came Thermidor and into the lobster pot. Roboteers, stand by. Scutter's Revenge from Essex, a confident team. Remy Idris, Darren Ball and Graham Warner, the team captain. Three, and Pussycat, two, Robin Herrick, David Gribble one. and Robert Bittington. Debate. And there immediately, Pussycat flipping up and over so that they can bring the diamond saw into play. Scutter's Revenge, the main weapon is that powerful scoop on the front. Pussycat turning again to bring the blade in. Same, is that the same blade? They've, uh, they've brought another diamond blade on there. A diamond saw blade. Certainly looks darker than the one we had before. Taking on... Oh! And it was a different blade! It's shattered! It's a completely different blade! And they could be in trouble here now, Pussycat! Scottish Revenge on the attack! Look at this, the blade shatters against the arena wall! And not only could they be in trouble from Scutter's Revenge, but they could be in trouble here with the judges, Pussycat. I didn't know. I don't think any of us knew they changed the blade. And the rules and regulations quite clearly say hardened blades which may shatter are prohibited by Robot Wars. This is naughty now. The Pussycat team have done something they shouldn't have done. Scutter's Revenge are on the attack. They'll want to finish it here and then. We'll wait and see what happens to Pussycat afterwards, but back on the arena floor, it's Pussycat bashing Scutter's revenge against the arena wall. Using the power there from the four wheels, the electric motors, two 750-watt electric motors. Oh, and look at this shove from Pussycat. This for a place in the series semi-final. And was there a, a waft of smoke we saw from Scudder's Revenge? Yes! The engines are smoking! It's burnt out Scudder's Revenge immobiliser slam from Pussycat! It's not a well-behaved cat, I can tell you, though. They shouldn't have changed that blade the way they did. Scudder's Revenge immobilised now. Let Matilda in. Well, what an eventful heat this has been, and what an eventful heat final.
Now Scudder's Revenge already smoking on the flame pit. Kill a lot, tossing it up and over. The Scudder's Revenge boys know their time is nigh in this heat final. I'm sure, though, someone is going to have words with Pussycat about the change of that blade. On to the big flipper on the arena floor, and that's Scudder's Revenge over and out. A smile, what a heat final. Laced with controversy, this is the way it finished for Scutter's Revenge, over and out. But it's gone to the judges because of the change of blades, and Pussycat didn't realise they couldn't use hardened blades. We didn't know that they changed the blade. Right. Um, so it wasn't hardened to the blade because it shattered. And they're forbidden the rules, so they're discussing whether that is an intention big enough for disqualification, but we'll let you know when the judge makes a decision. OK, thank you very much. Well, it's up to Martin Smith, Noel Sharkey and Adam Harper on the right to make that decision. What a shame it would be for Pussycat, great team. But look at this, this is where the hardened steel blade shatters. Pieces of that blade could have gone anywhere. It's clearly against the rules. Philippa, you have the decision right now. As it's a technical contravention, and for health and safety reasons, the judges have had to vote that you be disqualified because the saw shattered and it was against the rules. And I'm really sorry to have to break that news to you because you have a fantastic robot and you've been a great team. But we'll have to let you go. We'll have to come back next year. Yeah. Mm. Sorry. Very good. Sorry. <laughs> Ooh, shattering for them. It means that Scutter's Revenge go through by default, but will they be able to take their place in the semi-finals? Did the motors burn out? Will they be fit to continue? It all ended rather ignominiously. Embarrassingly, can they go on? For you, it means that Scutter's Revenge now is a series semi-finalist. Uh, does that mean that you can actually play an active fine. part the in the next fight? The Give us 20 fine. minutes. Yeah. We'll yeah. Be... Really? Yeah. 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 That yeah. quick? The robot's yeah. fine. All it was was a battery problem. You told me Judgment Day was overdue. It no, was postponed. It was postponed. It was postponed. Yeah. It was postponed. Yeah. And it was postponed. Yeah. You're still in the game. Yeah. So okay. Judgment Day has yet to come. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thanks. Thank Thanks very much. Okay. Thanks. Cheers. Well, you can grovel and beg when you're down on all fours. But we'll show no mercy on Robot Wars. Bye-bye.